Well, we're very excited about our next exhibition that opens on March 8th. It's our spring exhibition, How I Love Sagamore Hill. And it deals with photography by uh, C.O. Morrow, who has gone into Sagamore Hill and the president's home there and taken photographs of the house after almost all of its furnishings have been removed for the long-term rehabilitation of the house, which has just started. Well, Sagamore Hill was the family home of Theodore Roosevelt, our 26th president. Theodore Roosevelt had the home built in 1885, and he lived there with his family until his death in 1919. He raised his six children at Sagamore Hill, and it was a working farm during the years that Theodore Roosevelt was there. Of course, during his presidency, Sagamore Hill was famously known as the Summer White House, as Theodore Roosevelt used to spend his summers away from Washington, D.C., conducting the nation's business right here in Oyster Bay. Uh, my great-grandfather and Theodore Roosevelt's father were brothers, and so I am a cousin um, about three times removed of Theodore Roosevelt. I'm also related, of course, to Eleanor and FDR because Eleanor was T.R.'s niece and FDR married his cousin and so it's like a can of worms. We're all uh, there together. With the exhibit we're going to have here, uh, you can see the interior of the uh, Sagamore Hill house, uh, of course, without the uh, furniture, as it now is in being renovated. Um, it's uh, very interesting because you wouldn't usually look at the walls and uh, the stained glass in the windows and things like that. A lot of the times when you see an image of Sagamore Hill, you know, they'll show something with the farm and, and the beautiful home from a distance, but then you, you don't really get an idea of what's happening inside. And then the few shots that you see inside um, are typically these crowded rooms full of this wonderful memorabilia and all these different objects from Theodore Roosevelt's life. But then to know that all that was going to be removed and you were actually going to ha let the house sort of speak for itself, I thought was really interesting. And then we saw a couple of his uh, shots months ago. And one that really stands out for me is uh, a shot that he took of the bathtub and the shower, um, which I think might have been pretty state-of-the-art back in the t at the, the time, but it's beautiful. You know, there's the tile, of course, um, and then the porcelain knobs, the hot and cold. And to think that, you know, here's this great president uh, and, and just a wonderful humanitarian and environmentalist, went back when there really weren't environmentalists um, or just a handful of them really speaking out. You know, that was his shower. And as weird as that is, it was also very intimate and I just loved that that's not something you can see from the regular tour. That is something that um, you may not have even noticed because of all the other things that they would have placed in the room to interpret it as it was when he was living there, uh, he and his family were living there. So that's the neat thing about these pictures is that you get to see some details that you would have just passed by and it allows you some time to contemplate um, that home in a different way other than just being President Roosevelt's home but just this beautiful testament to architecture and design and craftsmanship. Another detail that was uh, uh, really special that uh, one of our curators uh, hadn't really noticed before was a detail of the original wallpaper that is found in the North Room. It is the only original wallpaper uh, left in the home. Uh, and in uh, the detail that Seal was able to catch, you can see dual peacocks looking at each other uh, in the pattern of the wallpaper. And it was just not something that we had ever really thought about or noticed uh, until Seal came in and, and uh, undertook uh, his work in the home. 
It's, it's a very interesting concept to come into a house that's known as a home and take pictures of it unfurnished. And for me, the, the exciting part about it is that it's, it's an opportunity that won't really come again, most likely for folks, to see the bones of Sagamore Hill and what a beautiful place it is, not just because the president lived there, but in and of itself. Uh, to me, the photographs that are most appealing are those that show the architectural details of, of the house itself. And not just as they it might relate to TR and his very imposing figure, but the, the, the very charming domestic spirit of that house uh, that was home to not just a president but a family. And uh, that that's what, what really strikes, strikes me very much about this exhibit and why I really encourage people to see it. He had unfettered access throughout the building and uh, did an amazing job with photographing features with limited lighting and using natural light to capture the beauty and the intricate details throughout the home. And his work is apparent in the photos uh, that will be exhibited here at the Oyster Bay Historical Society's Koenig Research Center. That along with the fact that um, although Sagamore Hill is nationally important and internationally important, um, it, is, it is part of Oyster Bay and I think that's why we are lucky enough to be the venue for it here at the Historical Society. It tells us something about where we live as well and uh, it's on then many levels that the exhibit I think will will be something people want to see not just locally but folks from from anywhere will bring something back home with them after they've had a chance to look at these very exceptional photographs. Mm -hmm.